You're listening to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan, as always, joined by Callum and James. Hey, gone boys. Not bad. We have a special in, uh, interview Very special, uh, yeah. and episode today. We're talking to, or James has already talked to... Um, Jesse Button and Haley Fox. from Button Fox about their new game, Freight Ally. Unfortunately, me and Callum couldn't make it. We had work. Uh, but James has managed to fit it in his schedule. Yes. Um, so, this is also we, our first video on YouTube. Yeah. So, we are pre-recorded the interview over Zoom. So, you can listen to the audio podcast now, which is what you're doing. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, the Tuesday Review YouTube channel. And the whole full video interview is up there. So I recommend doing that because there's some cool little Easter eggs and things that we're doing on the screen that... Um, Obviously, you can't, you, can't, you can't get through audio. Yeah. Um, we talked about Freight Ally a few weeks ago because we, yeah. we played it at PAX. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's a game we really liked. And so it was awesome to talk to Jesse and Haley about the game and how it was created and their Kickstarter to get the game funded and released properly. So, And it's a local business. Yeah, they're from Melbourne, so they're really cool, really nice, really talented. And if you definitely go to the uh, um, Freight Ally Kickstarter page and support them if you can because it's a really cool game. And, yeah. Um, yeah, Enjoy. so here's the interview. Okay, hey everyone. We are here with Haley and Jesse, the creators of Frayed Ally, That's um, right. a game we got to play at PAX this year. Um, Callum and Nathan couldn't make it today, but um, yeah, it's a game we really enjoyed, and we got the opportunity to um, play it. And now we uh, got the opportunity to talk to you guys about the origins of the game and stuff like that. Um, before the recording, we were just talking about how um, it's Frayed Ally, but it could have been Frayed Alley with the E. Um, yes. And I think both 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 names work. Mm, yes. We, so we'll toss up between the two names. We liked the name. Well, we liked both of them, really. But the first one, we stuck with Ally because it made more sense in the game because the name Frayed Ally, so you you start off as sort of allies as you play the game and then as you start to backstab people and it sort of changes up to that the yeah. alliance has become frayed yeah. and obviously the... frayed relates to the clothing brand that we have as well yeah. but yeah it's set in frayed alley so that also could have been the okay. name so oh so, uh, yeah because it's yeah, it's sewer city it's like the alley it's like crime alley it's like this yeah kind of did scrappy... you also notice sewer can be said like sewer Oh, as well. <laughs> that's, but that, everything has that sort of double. Yeah, meaning. yeah, because I notice all your character names have, um, like, yeah, c clothing terms. Actually, yeah. well, that's that's where we'll start because your guys' company is called Button Fox, mm -hmm. and it's like a fashion. You make like custom clothing and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's where we originated for mm -hmm. making clothing. Like, how did that start? And then how did you kind of go from fashion into making this card game? Ooh. So <laughs> I guess we started, I started as a the character first. So it was Button Fox. I was working on a children's book at the time. I did a short okay. course. And if we started a business, we always wanted a mascot. We yeah. thought that's just to have this little character. It sells products well for one, but it's just people Memorable. get invested in characters, I think. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I did game design before I even started the business as well. So I'm all, all about making characters. And so I had this character idea. And then when we first got together, we sort of had our own businesses. So I was doing design and she was doing corsetry, which is even... I studied costume design. Yeah. So, and I really loved corsetry, but not business minded at all. Still not. Um, so I didn't want to do it by myself. For the layman, corsetry <laughs> assumedly comes from corset, which is yes. more like dressmaking. So specifically undergarments, like corsets. You oh, know, so literally corsets. corsets. Yeah, literally okay. corsets. Yeah. Yep. Wow. That's <laughs> all cool. custom made to order yeah mm. yeah so yeah. we started doing our own things and then as we got together we sort of um instead of sort of doing it by ourselves we wanted to kind of combo the two together and sort of that's where our business came to be the very mm. first products we made 
were Jesse started designing fabrics. He did, a, I think a Mario fabric was one of the ones he first did. Mm. And then I thought, I'm going to make some stuff out of this. So I made some hair bows. I made some book covers. You made curtains for yeah. me at one point. Yeah. So that's how we, we took started. It, took yeah. that stuff to conventions. Like we made little hair bows and stuff and they did really well. And that sort of evolved to making hoodies. So originally and... we started obviously in the small crafts. Yeah. Um, they were just easy, fast, not too complicated. But then as time went on, Obviously, our passion's always been in clothing, but I was always like, I don't want to make the same thing over and over and over again. Mm. <laughs> Never wanted to really do fashion. Um, but then I always loved it. And then I kind of got convinced through Jesse. We mm. did one one cape for our um, first Kickstarter, which was the Button Fox plush toy. And then we saw how well, how much people liked them. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> Fine. So I got talked into doing more and more and then people just started loving them. That's now what we're known for. And then that's slowly going into hoodies. It's going into jackets and everything mm. is much more complicated now. But you, I just, I got convinced from that it, one yeah. item of clothing. <laughs> it's not like you do like a mass produced, it's all no. custom. Like Yeah, similar. still short batches. So occasionally okay. like a lot of, most things are one-off, but then mm. we do batches of say a Sonic hoodie. Like or, we'll do 10 of them or yeah. sort of thing or mm. just like, very limited. Mm. I did, yeah. Jesse's bomber jacket with the Freight Ally logo. Oh, we, yeah. were, we were admiring that. Um, We've got that the, the official one to show you as oh, well. Yeah, if you okay, want. cool. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. based on the reception we got from PAX, mm. lots of people said, I really want that jacket. Yeah. And I wasn't planning to do it with them. It was just our uniforms <laughs> to show off the artwork and yeah. all the branding. But then from that, I was like, oh, I guess I have to do them. <laughs> <laughs> so um i do enjoy it's, making the jackets it's your own fault for being you're both so talented and then <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> well jesse's just gonna model it for you I'm now modeling. so oh, it's not the go. greatest camera right now to model it oh no it looks fine yeah yeah that it's really cool and then we've got the, got the so you got five pockets you got oh, nice two Should... welt pockets two oh, flat pockets and then you got better. a secret inner pocket there Oh, perfect. <laughs> and they're all going to be numbered as well. So they'll oh, all nice. be limited. So they'll say which number they are. All right. Yeah. No, I'm definitely. Might as well wear it for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I saw that. And then I saw on your Instagram, you had like that, your other bomber jackets. I'm like, oh, I need one of those. <laughs> and then I saw a Mighty Boosh um, yeah. hoodie. Oh, and I was, was like, like well, a one off for a yeah. friend we made. Yeah. We've had I mean, like a lot of, a lot of random stuff throughout the years, but it's, yeah. it's where we really get our passion. We get to do just unique projects all the time fun yeah so from that like the character of button fox he's i guess your mascot for your clothing brand and you know making cool bits and pieces and then you were like hey he's a cool character let's make a game about him is that yeah so oh, it's it kind of there's, there's i guess there's more to Just that breathe first. Yeah. think about your story yeah. first <laughs> he's gonna cut so... this up i'm assuming <laughs> He Based? screwed this up in our other interview. So he was like okay. spewing. He's like, ah. Yeah, I know. I, I struggle with like getting put on the spot with what <laughs> I want to say. But um, I guess when we did our Kickstarter 2014, 15, mm -hmm. which was a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, we did a plush toy and then we had ideas for other characters then. Mm -hmm. So they were already sort of So for us, I think done. the fox, the cat, the wolf, uh, the bunny and the monkey were all original characters we had from the very start. Yep. We just thought it's, we kind of introduced them in like flush toys. We did the cat um, and we were trying to do the bunny, but we just thought it's much smarter to focus all that energy on one character. Mm. Like we're doing a very hard thing. We are trying to start a character base, original character based business, which is so impossible in an industry that is so just based on fan art and yeah. already realized fandoms mm. so we thought it's better to put all that yeah, we decided or well, i think i decided i convinced you at the time that we should just focus on one because i was sad that being like <laughs> there's so many it's going to be very hard for people to get attached to that one character mm. so we just stick with the one and then when, if that does well then we can think about the other ones and then fast forward 10 years later <laughs> and so now I, it's the time <laughs> and then the whole idea for a game i guess came from as we've been driving to conventions, we do them like 20 or so a year at the time. We were in the car a lot of the time and just discussing ideas and building the story of where Button Fox came from. We already had a cast of characters. Uh, yeah. 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 And so we were like, each character has where they where they sort of 
arrive within the world and how they meet each other and all that sort of stuff. So we basically have a TV show script in our head already. Like we know mm. they all have origins. They that's, all have backstories. I was going to say, this needs to be an animated <laughs> series. <laughs> that's, a, that's the that's dream. That's the dream, yeah, eventually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesse, do you do all the artwork? Who does the... No, I did the concepts. So okay. I had... I and back in the fo- day, yes. You, yeah, back in the day I did. doing all of that, yeah. Um, but I decided to focus more on the design part because if you, did, if you don't do art full time, it's never going to be as good as you want it to be. Mm. And my vision is it goes beyond what I can do at the moment. Because our business has always been just us. So yeah. running that, like I basically sew and that's my main job. So Jesse does everything else, social media, running the yeah. website. Like well, every photos. little thing that we do, you mm. could probably have someone, you could pay someone to do yeah. that role. Yeah. And so we're trying to do too many things. So I think and how so long I decided... ago do you think we got artists? How long ago has it been? Like we've had, we've worked with lots of different artists. Like we had Rice Spirit, who's a great artist. We've had drawings of Pokemon, um, who's also just done her own and Kickstarter with Stitch her partner. Stink and Stitch, now yeah. Hurricane. Yeah. So we've gone through like a lot of different, and then we've got, we always get fan art too. Yeah. When we did conventions and we just love the different interpretations of our character. Mm. But yeah, That's... I don't know. Yeah. That's what's so great is like you've created these really strong characters that as immediately as soon as you see them, people are just gravitate. It's like, I want that on a shirt. I want to draw that. I want to. And then for you to create a world of those characters, I think it's going to take off. I, I mean, like, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've already got our like little, obviously our base audience that yeah. already are really invested in button Fox. So they're already there, but definitely mm. expanding that audience. I feel like, over the over the 10 years we've built a small audience but they are very loyal but it is still small so mm. we're hoping that this will open us up to the gamer audience and I think more this is the first time we've focused on the characters mm. like it's always yeah. been on the sort of back burner mm. whereas clothing's been the thing that we've pushed because that's how we make a living mm. and so we'll we'll do little subtle things to add them to the clothing like the ears on the hoods and everything or the appliques but it's really nice to actually get that time because we had kids. We've got given extra time through COVID too. Mm. I got given that extra time to like work on that. And Mm. it got to a point where we were very close to getting a finished product. And so Haley said, you were, you know, focus on that, get that done. And then we can tick it off and hopefully people are going to enjoy it as well. Cause it is Mm. a passion project. Obviously we hope it does really well it it's hopefully going to change our lives yeah. mm. uh, we've been struggling artists for a long time mm. <laughs> um but yeah it is definitely a passion project especially for jesse it's his it's his baby it's his third child i think mm. that's what i'm most passionate about the character side and the clothing's always been your more of your passion and so it's it's nice i finally pursue or push that mm. Mm. yeah mm. i think the the passion comes across so so i think that really helps to to endear people to it um, I want to talk about like the characters in the universe more later, yep. but I guess we should explain. Um, so you've, you've got the characters and you're like, let's make this game. Why a card game battle Royale specifically? And can you explain like the gameplay or the general idea of how, how the game works? Yep. So um, I have a background in game design, but I'm limited on what I'm able to do myself. Like we're a very small team. So I've got me as a designer and then we've got Hurricane as the artist. There's like, I had to avoid things like programmers and stuff because mm. I'm not a programmer. And then we would have to outsource that. And we're very limited on the funding we can actually have to even work on this game. Mm. So Before, that was the, sorry. I think he's asleep. I might go try and put him to sleep. Oh, you want to put him to sleep? <laughs> It'll only take sorry, is that okay? For <laughs> that's interrupt? fine, that's fine. We're just, for audio Passed listeners, the, the baby's <laughs> fallen asleep. Passed out. <laughs> All this talk of board games, so boring. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they build a passion in the future, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Um, so, yeah, we had limitations. I don't know if you want me to keep going now. Yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah. So we had limitations of what we could do. And so we chose a, a board game because it seemed more doable. Mm. So it's like I've got the, the design part right. It's just a matter of um, being able to produce it and if you have a program, there's more people you have to outsource or sound design mm. and all that sort yeah. of extra stuff. Whereas, yeah, it just seemed doable as a card game. Mm. And um, what was the other question you had? Um, just explain the gameplay. Oh, like, yeah, sorry. How, how does it work? Wait, Haley's coming back. 
Oh, that's Sorry. right. Yeah, we'll wipe for it and then we'll do the. Oh, that was easy. So next time when the baby can't get to sleep, just play her, play, play him my voice. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have this little... recording in the background. Yeah, just straight away. <laughs> and so, so how do, was it? How to play games? That you said? Yeah. So, how, what, what's the game play? Yeah. How do you huh? do the spiel? So how does the game work? The... Okay, yeah. so basically you start off with a, a random crafty character. Each player doesn't know who they are until later in the game. So you reveal this character once you're one hit point from dying. And so you're at your most vulnerable, but at that point you're also at strongest because each character has a unique quirk that kind of keeps him in the game. And so all the rivals have four HP except for the fox who has five. It's exactly the same as the, the wolf. And so as you're sort of taking damage each turn, um, once you get that one point away, you kind of discover who's there. And depending on what characters are in the field, there's a slight, slightly different way to win the game. And each type of character has a different way to win the game. Yes. So if you're a rival, you're trying to defeat the foes, but you want to lie, land the last blow on the wolf in order mm. to be victor. victor. Mm. But the fun part about the game is you don't know if there is a villain in play. And if that's the case, it becomes a classic battle royale. And then there's also things like action cards. So they are like sort of bonus actions or things that enhance your turn. So you can use them before, or if it's a defensive card, before or after your turn at any time. Whereas if it's an offensive card, it's used on your turn to enhance your play. Hmm. And so, and there's also traps, which make the game like sort of the unpredictability of it. Whereas you could be the, the best player, but if you just happen to pick up that bomb, it could like... Boom. yeah. yeah. Dead. <laughs> take damage you're not dead but you take damage and but if you're one hit point from so, dying there where it becomes very like dangerous also i don't think you mentioned about how to win if you're the villain oh so if you're the villain you just want to kill everyone mm. the minion has the same sort of role he's helping the villain but all the rivals yeah one you want to do that so final blow it's random so it's you pick your character you don't see who it is until no you later. know who it is no one you else know, knows no who else you are. Knows. Yeah. That's like you could all be rivals and that in that case you just have to fight each other out. Yeah. But if you're a villain, you have to mm -hmm. kill everyone else. Yes, yes. Um, or a minion, you have to mm. so it's like it can be like three versus one or could yeah. be three. Yeah. yeah, so I guess four against that's four. where this sort of the title of the game comes in, like frayed ally. So you're sort of allies in the way that you're trying to discover who's on the field. Mm. And then once you discover like there's a villain, then you yeah. realize I want to be the one who does the final blow. Mm. but then you don't want to kill rivals too early because mm -hmm. if you do that and the villain does get revealed or there's a minion as well, the rivals have no chance of winning. because yeah. Not like, no chance. It's well, just no, really the, hard. The chances yeah. are yeah. quite Always low. Chance. Yeah. So that's why you've got the, sort of an alliance in a way, but in the end, it's you're all for glory. You want to win by yourself. Mm. You don't care about the other players. So that's where the allies so are afraid. Fragile mm. alliance. Mm. Yeah. So yes. You have to keep them in play so you're not on your own, but then really... Yeah, you're sort of using them to get what you sort of want, yeah. the final goal. Definitely. Yeah. And there's a few, like, because it did always start quite basic. It's qu gone through quite an evolution since the basic, very D&D &D fantasy style game that we started with. They're all wearing capes and oh. yeah. going on adventures. Oh, yeah, I want to see that version. <laughs> yeah, please. it was really cool. We've actually, do we have the sketches that we're putting on the page? Are we actually putting them up? The old we've, ones? Yeah. Oh, uh, we could. So we started with... um. I don't know if you've caught of heard of um, drawings of Pokemon. She's been around the con scene for ages, does anatomical drawing, like pencil drawings of Pokemon. Mm. So she was our original artist back eight years ago when we started. Since then, she's become an amazing animator. Like yeah, part works of on some big, big TV products. shows, like animating. Yeah. Yep. Did a Kickstarter for her video game with her partner that made over $100,000. So she, long story short, came way too busy. Um, and so we moved on from them and, as that happened, our ideas evolved, changed style multiple times. But And then I guess the reason I didn't want to do fantasy, because I feel like, especially with um, like the characters, um, that sort of thing's been done before, mm. whereas the sort of street sort of angle that we're going for is a bit more unique. And, and it's different. where our clothing is now as well. Yeah, so we also to overlap. Our, our stuff's evolved. Mm. But I think that was one of the, the first reasons why we changed up styles is mm. because it just it was more unique and you could do more with it. Modern, yeah, modern fashion. Yeah, whereas if you go with the fantasy thing, you're, you tend to be maybe not copying, but you're getting a lot of um, ideas from things that already exist, mm. like it's been done. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think it also works with the scrappy kind of like mm. back alley, <laughs> back alley yeah. 
sprawl like um yeah definitely yeah um as i was saying sorry i, I forgot to mention because i was i got on a tangent yeah. um the gameplay mechanics so the game itself was quite simple uh but then even recently like within the last few months we introduced a few mechanics that we really like so when you reveal someone for the first time you get either positive things or negative things happen if so you get like bonus action cards yeah. which can be positive mm. or if you pick up a trap it can be negative so mm. you take it as you will and then there's also things like um when you eliminate someone you get to take their loot so mm -hmm. if they have any extra action cards in their hand you get to take them and those those are things that you don't need didn't need to have the game like play as it is but it just enhances it even so, the bombs they're in the last year if, like yeah. most of the really pivotal moments happened within the last year year and a half when we actually got the time to start full-time mm. kind of working on it because before that it was really on and off really sporadic because i had i had friends that were like no no don't add stuff to it don't don't keep adding to it like just have it like, finish <laughs> that it was me too yeah yeah like don't just finish it <laughs> i'm like it's fine stop <laughs> changing I was, it i've always been in the mindset like no if, if you can add more things why not as well yeah. you know what i mean like, and you kept improving it kept improving it even though i'm like it's good the way it is stop stop with it especially Sorry, excuse me no, that's all right. <laughs> stop yeah, screwing with, with i guess it. with um with card games in particular I've, I've never designed one before i've more had a, a sort of a digital game design background and um i guess when you play test it and you it's it's you can't know like one way to do it sort of thing like mm. and maybe there is but for us it was just you have to play test it doesn't work change it that doesn't work change it again until mm. you finally tune it to be mm. like actually that's really fun yeah you also want to be unique you don't want to just make oh it's this game but with our yeah. characters or exactly like it's you can of... you can take things you like mm. from games yeah but have your own twist on it I that's suppose. the interesting thing about us as game makers as well i wouldn't say we're avid card gamers or I was board gamers that, yeah we uh we like them we have a family. We do not have much time to do them. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that we are drawn to sort of casual games mm. that we can you can just pick up. It doesn't take too much to learn. And I think that's where I wanted to design a game like that, that we mm. can enjoy. And maybe people like us that might not play card games all the time can still pick it up, instantly learn and have a lot of fun with their mm. friends that are potentially, you know, pro Cardboard yeah. gamers. So I think we have a very specific point of view because we also didn't yeah. have much outside influence from other games as well because of that. Yeah. So we've, you know, we've played a few that we enjoyed. And obviously we've had influences from our friends who have played lots of games and said like, oh, hey, this is a really good mechanic that I know is tried and true. You know, take little bits from that, but then we can alter it to how we like playing with it, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's always hard to get everyone together to play a board game especially yeah. after COVID. Yes. And then you have to learn the rules and mm. put out all the pieces in the board mm. and whatever. But I like what we liked about when we played Spread Ally was like it was quick to learn. It's also a fast-paced game. So I was likening it to Uno where you're just slamming down cards. Yeah. It's just like reverse. No, reverse on you. Oh, draw yeah. four. Oh, yeah, reverse. And we were saying it's like the Freight Ally name is very apt because it's like it'll create – like a lot of tension like uno yeah. just, it destroys friendships <laughs> yeah but, like but you, you slowly unravel the, yeah, the whole but like, also <laughs> you, you play with your friends and you're like oh this is awesome let's go again and then you hate each other and they're like but let's yeah play. and it's funny how fast it happens because i'll notice yeah. like i'll be like hey that's the wolf i'm the pig like oh sorry i'm the, i'm the villain and they're the minion and then you kind of like oh yeah and yeah. you just instantly bonded in that game <laughs> yeah. and then turned around the next one when and you want to kill each other i think when we play tested at pax I discovered that whenever you got a group of like mates playing it, they had the best fun. Like they were, they wanted to screw each other over. Yeah. They were being spiteful. Like mm. they're just gang up on someone. Yeah. Mm. Whereas when you had, um, there was other games where each other. Yeah, people didn't know each other, they bonded more. They mm. like, they became friends. And I, I got the <laughs> comments saying like, Oh, this is actually a very social game. Like, I feel like we could be friends after this. Sort so of thing. it brings strangers right. together, but it rips friendships Friend apart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is fun. Like, see that different dynamic. Yeah, there's a, yeah. yeah there's, there's a frayed stitching metaphor that I can't that I can't <laughs> yeah. put together about. Yeah, that. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like you were saying, like you because you're not super avid, uh, game like board game and stuff like that. Uh, are there any specific inspirations? Both with the fashion and with the game. Well, we really liked Werewolf. Oh, I know. Werewolf. I know. There's a few like 
cor- correlations before, um, between them, but there was lots that we didn't like about it because mm. we like deceptive games. We don't like when that's a really big part of the game. We always found that really awkward when yeah, you start. When you're, you're trying like, to con- you're trying to lie to someone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but whereas I guess with our game, it's it's subtle. You mm. like you don't have to do that if you're yeah. not if you're not into that. You don't need to do that part of it. Yeah, we just not- like the that fact of you don't know who everyone yeah. is. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, you don't have that to was... actively try to convince people you're not who you are, yeah. like yeah. what character, yeah. Obviously, with fashion, we're really inspired by Japanese streetwear. That's always That's kind where of it's where sort we've of originated from. from. Yeah. Like, we've been to Japan a few times and just love their fashion there. Mm. Um, I don't know. I and random so animes right. and things like that. But specific yeah. ones, like as far as games, not really. Like, I mm. guess I'm like, you know, I'm a big Super Mario fan and stuff <laughs> like that. So I like the sort of easy, fun sort of games and mm. i guess that's a big inspiration for our game i want it to be like a you know like a mario world sort of thing which but it's like our yeah. own sewer city strong, of yes strong iconography strong characters strong yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but i guess throughout our journey of everything we've done we've always been in this situation where we feel like it sounds big-headed and it sounds weird but we've always been in this situation where no one's doing what we're doing so mm. it, which is great mm. but also it leaves you a bit lost sometimes when mm. you're like, we don't have someone to take some inspiration from where we can take little things, but we'll be designing things that don't exist. So we're like, yeah, that's definitely come a tough part where you're yeah. like, Oh, should we, is it, are we doing it the right way? <laughs> and then like, you're trying to do research on like, like what to do. And then you're like, I can't find anyone doing what we're doing, which is yeah, a great mm. thing, mm. but it, it makes it hard as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, you're feeling, yeah, a, I don't know. feeling, a void, but yeah. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, they're exactly paving the way. Yeah, Obviously, there could be some people out there, but oh, just not, yeah, not yeah. that we know of. Yeah, mm. like we've had our we've had our game compared to exploding kittens. Yes. with the with the like the bombs okay. and stuff, yeah. which we still haven't played. We haven't we played don't before. Think. <laughs> um, yeah, we I've have heard of it, but yeah, the, I don't think we've played it. <laughs> I don't think we have. We haven't had friends that have played it. Yeah, I've but never. It's one of these. I've never oh, played it. I've never played it, but I I'm just gonna say that your game's better. <laughs> thank, thank you. you appreciate thank it you. <laughs> <laughs> um your characters are cooler anyway oh, thank, you. Um, thank you speaking of like all the characters um and all their names like they have like we were saying earlier the names are all based on sewing terms or clothing terms and stuff like that yeah um i mean i i love those little character Skinny. models you had oh yeah you've got them there yeah so they're these cool uh, please tell me those are going to come with the final <laughs> product. And they are an add-on, basically. Okay. We didn't want to make the base game too expensive. Yeah, so yeah. if they were say... in there, it's going to be like over a hundred dollars. And the, game. the yeah. fun part about those is they were like a they weren't. We didn't even think about them until for use in the game. Yeah, either. for use in the game <laughs> until we were going to PAX and we wanted to. I guess I don't know. I don't even remember why we made them. I... I don't, I don't remember how it started. It was very late in the game. Like mm. we were kind of like, because for our last few Kickstarters, the first one was crazy. We made every single reward and there were so many rewards and I hated myself, obviously. <laughs> so we decided to don't, like dial it back a little bit for the second Kickstarter, which was our cave, yeah. um, but still was a little bit mm. like out of control. Because we were hand making everything. Yeah. Then, so we so started very with, hard. Yeah. So we started with this one with like mindset of let's make it simple. Like let's not oh, do I too think, many things. I think things. The, the standees were, because on the cards you only see a portion of the characters. <gasps> which has changed. It uh, wasn't yeah. like that before. Yeah. We've, we've sort of zoomed it out a little bit, but you don't still don't see the full like mm. picture. And the artwork's so great that we were like, oh, let's try and figure out something to make. And then we made those standees. It's just like a placeholder mm. just to show it can uh, packs. Oh, that's my favorite. Like you can see. That's my yeah. So if you compare that to that. So they like, used to be the whole character, oh, but yeah. then we zoomed the it out. Zip the green monkey. That's the <laughs> one. So, <laughs> so when, we, when we sat down at your table and uh, you were like giving out the cards and saying, oh, the characters are random. I'm like, damn, I wanted the green monkey. And I looked at my <laughs> card and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Try to compose yourself. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I, I guess yeah. That's what I love as well. That's part that, of the game too. <laughs> yeah. Like people say who their favorite character is and their characters I didn't even think would be as popular yeah. as they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which, and, but it's great to see it's kind of, kind of equal in popularity. Mm, definitely. Like, a lot of different people like diff- the different characters. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, you will be able to get the standees. Again, okay. we didn't make them to be placeholders, but then we're like, oh, oh yeah. So, as we're playing <laughs> at packs and stuff, 
that's when people were like uh, they loved having it in front of them yeah and then that we sort of worked out like actually this could be really I, great for the game yeah when i when i quote unquote won that match because i mean we were still learning and jesse and was it was it dan who yeah my brother dan out? yes he was helping out and like we we're playing and so i technically won even though it was you know <laughs> you, you were you were telling me what to do Nah. Um, but then <laughs> Two at, the, at the end i had my little green monkey zip. like a trophy yeah i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. he's so cool <laughs> and i think a fun part as well when people eliminate each other you can kind of knock them over yeah that's, yeah <laughs> and it's like a physical thing you can Very do visual yeah that's yeah. what the best that's what the i think that's the the best use of it is mm. you get that final uh chess checkmate yeah we've also them. got um so these are the skull tokens you would have seen them yeah, yeah. at the event these ones so they're just like card what you I don't would think regularly get. We had them get. at the event. We didn't have these. We, no. we, you guys had the, 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 the wood. Oh. Yeah, we had the wood one. So we okay, do you want to see the upgrade? Oh, yes, please. So these are going to be, again, an add on. It's going to be a stretch goal. I don't know where they are. <laughs> do you want to see wanna, it? I don't know where they are. But so, I mean, they're somewhere obvious. The base. Just... So the base game is just the card game. Yep. Okay. No, no, it still comes in. So it comes. Yeah. So we didn't have this then as well. So this is the box. Yeah. So it comes with comes with the tokens that'll be under the two decks of cards. Oh yeah, the tokens. Um, and then it also comes with. Damn it, playing that's not here either. So we've got ideas for stretch goals as well. So these yep. are the sort of metal tokens we've got oh, kind of got wow. prototyped. Nice. You sort of see them. And know. they're like uh, textured, like yeah. Yeah, uh, textured. They got like sort of. You if you know, sit. like soft enamel pins. Yeah. So they're kind of like that. Pins, yeah. Yeah. In like a nice little bag. Yeah. And so this nice. is the game mat that it's going to come with. So that's oh, a cool. rubber mat. Um, yep. That'll be a stretch goal. So the original one's going to come with the card mat. And yep. the first stretch goal is to unlock this, which we haven't actually revealed to anyone. So there you go. Oh, um, exclusive. Choose our review. Exclusive. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so it's that'll... less than a week away. Yes. Until we, um, actually, yeah, we're going to release this episode on the day. So it'll oh, probably nice. be. Oh, amazing. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that'll be automatically upgraded. So we wanted to balance between making sure people felt like they were getting value. So things are just added automatically. So we've got some pins as well that people are going to get via. Um, just supporting the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also wanted the opportunity to be able to make things that, because we can't just add like a really expensive mm. add-on automatically that comes with it. So we're kind of trying to balance It's been that. actually a hard balance of trying to work out like what to include, what not to, like, because mm. you still need to pay, it needs to pay for itself. Mm. And it was sort of kind of hard to work it out, but I think we've got, I think we've got it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's really hard, like it's, um, uh, it's hard to not, uh get excited about oh we could add this and then there's, yes. there's, there's like 20 other board. dudes and then because can... one of the big things that happened to us um <laughs> last kickstarter or the one before that both oh both <laughs> is um the shipping like oh, we ended yeah. up having to do a lot of it out of our own our pocket yeah and i think we paid for like even people local to melbourne we delivered them ourselves we hand delivered we, a few we drove of... around <laughs> and did a whole course to get all their backers all their items <laughs> and so we're hoping to avoid that this year <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we've changed to you we're hopefully going to use a pledge manager so people okay. will will charge it afterwards we don't have to think about it right now which is mm. great because it was just a mind bender last especially time, when so. you're do dealing with international yeah um, yeah sort of and pledges. you don't know what people have ordered so you've got to work out every single shipping for every single place yeah and if it takes there. a little bit to get the, the project manufactured mm. the the prices can change too mm, yeah and so you want to make sure we're not too out of pocket because if we are we're not going to be able to you know deliver it but that won't happen yeah, that's exactly. That's why we've planned for it. So we've done two previous um, Kickstarters. We know the mistakes to fix for this one, and yeah. everything is going to run smoothly. Third time's a charm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. But um, yeah, no, I, I love the speaking of like the characters. Like, were there any, and you know, adding too much stuff and getting excited. Um, were there any characters you had concepts for that didn't make the game, and who could potentially return in future? Um. So we've got. We've got our main eight characters, yeah. but then hopefully for Stretch Girls, we're going to be releasing four more. So two full booster packs. Nice. With extra yeah. playing cards So that also well. yeah, comes with extra action cards. And then there was another character that we decided to cut just because it was, um, I don't even remember why. Well, it was mainly for the numbers. 
So it yeah. would end up being 13 characters. It was a really weird number. Mm. Um, I think we couldn't quite get the quirk right as well. And I think we wanted to Work on the design maybe save more. it for when we potentially do another booster yes. pack so with extra cards. It was a deer. Uh, that it's a character like we know is quite likable. So we do definitely want to pursue that. Mm, in the yep. future but it just needs a bit more work and yeah just number wise it didn't quite work out so mm. and we've got in our heads like probably heaps of different animals we want to do yeah but yeah, yeah lots, well, lots like of I, yeah. <laughs> there's so many ideas that's just that's the fun <laughs> oh, part yeah. mm. like i i've got all these ideas i just want to have time to do them sort of thing mm. yeah. yeah well hopefully so I, when the animated series comes yeah. out have all the characters and <laughs> yeah. yes hopefully <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah, no, yeah. I, I want like the characters and like the the expansions and future, um, like, I, yeah, I want to see more from the share. Oh, there's, I guess. Oh, yeah. Go there's ahead. also going to be characters that were they were going to be characters, but then they instead going to be action cards. Weirdly, oh, you know, there was a couple of characters. The curse one. Yeah, they're going to be in the expansion pack, but there was going to be a crow, and there was going to be a um a bee, oh. but they're now going to be just types of action cards because like i don't know if i should go into like the b is a very big um component of our universe as a okay. whole so it was originally like we had a little tiny little plush toy of the b hmm. uh, that was going to be one of our characters but it's um so we put it on yeah an action card now to represent life and health yeah so that's why on our uh, on all the characters there's a little um not yeah that, that's that so shape gone it's like a honeycomb oh, okay yep and so there's a there's a deeper law to that that oh. we're not going to necessarily go into so in the card game at the at the top. Oh yeah, tell? yeah. Oh, that's yeah. shouldn't be showing that card. Oh, that's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that guy before. Oh. <laughs> and then they're all hexagons on there as well. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. basically, there's a deeper law to why that is, but we we're not going to go into it in the card yeah. game, but. Hopefully for future things we mm. can. I was gonna say that yeah, I want to learn more about the shared the universe um mm. and the growing. So we're hoping maybe we'll Hopefully do a comic will... or a book. Or yeah, something comic. Like that. Yeah, yeah, our artist has expressed interest in making a comic of yeah. the universe at some point. So that, that would be, be amazing. Awesome. So there are yeah. all potential things we we can hopefully do. Mm. I want to yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got such a rich, fertile thing with all the characters and the the sewer city. So thank like, you. Thank yeah, you. I. I can't wait to for it to rich grow. fertile sewer. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm like those words together. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're just making some a lot. A lot grow. Here. Yeah, a lot can grow there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love our puns here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it and uh, hopefully yeah, the, the anime and the video game isn't um out of the realm of possibility in the future. Mm. Hopefully not. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm getting ahead. Of I'm going to have myself, <laughs> let alone you guys. So, um, so yeah, you guys showed this at PAX this year. Ha was that the first time you'd showed it? We've played, shown it. Like, test played it or? No, we've, uh, to the oh, yeah, we've right. tested with friends and obviously, but mm -hmm. to the public, we did an anniversary event to celebrate 10 years of crafting mm -hmm. for our button fox business. In May. In May, yeah. So this year. Yeah. So there was, only, it was this very small group of people, but they were, they were the first public people that got to play it and um, um at that stage it was still in quite early not early development but it was still not finished like, we're still testing like things <laughs> yeah a lot happened um <laughs> and we're testing things and we figured things out just from that that night so big thank you to all of our amazing play testers that came that night it was awesome yeah um, which was very crucial actually mm, to getting it to where it is now and making you a bit more confident about it as well because it's always a bit scary when you're just playing with your friends you're like they're yeah. just lying to me is it yeah. actually they're good just being also, nice yeah. yeah yeah also with when you play with your friends they sort of they already know how the game sort of plays and they've got in their head like they yeah. don't need to understand the card because they know that they know what it does mm. whereas when you play with the new like new people you need to work out mm. how to how to what's, use that card yeah what's complicated to understand what do you need to simplify yeah and so like that, yeah. i've worked out i need to make sort of like a glossary of what these words mean and like add little things on the card so people can understand when they can use it or when they can't and mm -hmm. and interestingly as far as showing the game we were originally supposed to show it in 2020 was our first uh, booked packs. We yeah. were ready to go, but that, that was luckily my first packs as well. <laughs> yeah, but luckily for us, 
um, we just wouldn't have wouldn't have done it. Would have a lot of things would have suffered. I don't. Did we even have Hurricane then? I don't even know. Like. I feel like yeah, I all the art has happened after it cha- that. It's changed a lot since then. Yeah, so we every had... time we've kind of come back to it, mm. it's become a different game. Mm. So what we would have released, you know, three years ago would probably be different, a mm. game, different game mm. to what it is now. Yeah, like the... well, our interests sort of changed a little bit and just it just naturally evolved mm. to what it is now. Definitely. And I guess if I didn't, if I don't release it now, in another five years, keep working on it, oh, it'll evolve keep... into something yeah, different. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Never... So, True. I can't yeah. remember who it was, but someone, a director once said, a uh, film is never finished. It's only abandoned. Mm. Ah. So I think like you get, Interesting. Like you, yeah. you, I think you always want to add more, you always, and then you just, at some point you just have to. Yeah, and that's almost and... more fitting for a game because a game is ever expandable. And that's I, the thing. You can like... always add more in the future. So yeah, you can't really add on to the goal. And there's, a, there's a lot of ways. If you change one thing, it changes the game completely. Mm. So Mm. that's happened a lot and yeah it's i think we've got to a point where we're happy with but i could still completely change a mechanic and <laughs> if you changed, gave him a couple of months you know what i mean like red it's red very red easy red. to do that um, really so just... stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah the expansion will actually retcon the first ga- <laughs> yeah, base yeah, yeah. game so <laughs> Um, i think that's the fun thing hopefully once we add more characters you'll be in the position where you can just choose who you want to put in so you 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 know you can choose your eight characters that will randomly go in yeah and if you're like i don't really like this character or i like these characters so i want to make sure they're in the game because they're mm. really fun to play it's with. a very so, character driven game yeah, yeah yeah so hopefully once you know if we had more and more and more and more characters people will just play with what they mm. resonate with the most and it's a lot of fun with the expansions that we've been working on it adds more minions to the game mm-hmm. so more chaos mm. and the same with the action cards it's more chaos mm. so as much as much fun you will have the base game, you're going to have a lot more fun with the expansion mm-hmm, because definitely. there's so many things that can screw you over or you can yeah. just like combo and get some really fun results. That's, yeah, that's what I was saying with is the Uno is just stacking. So yeah. yeah. Far, and it gets faster and more fun. And then that's and... the funnest part about it, seeing the different like counters <laughs> people do. Yeah. Because people legit think they've won. They sit there like, yeah. there's literally no way I can lose here. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've had people laughing. Over. They're like, ha I just screwed you over. And then they pick up a bomb and they're just like, yeah. or Damn deflect. It. Done. Yeah, or whatever. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's when the table gets flipped and exactly, yeah. Yeah. everyone everyone goes, has to go home quiet and not yeah. talk. Well, I guess the good thing about it, since it's so short, you quickly reload, mm. you try yeah. again. No one's, too, no one's sitting there being salty for too long. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, we've got some salty friends. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, you showed it at PAX, um, and I'm assuming that was, uh, a big deal and helpful to, has, has anything, so when, when was that a month ago? Mm. Yeah. About a about month a, ago. Uh, about two months ago. Yeah. Mm. Has I anything, has anything major changed or you're just like, we're kind of in the end. Change. We didn't find any problems. I think mainly mm. what we learned is about the glossary and the definitions yeah is that maybe a few words needed to be changed especially on the cards mm. yeah but we didn't actually encounter problems which to me is mind-blowing and i think yeah. the most it did was was for jesse's confidence to make him feel like oh my yeah. god like people actually like it and we might actually be successful so Even I, was, I was very stressed out about is it going to work smoothly mm. like am i going to have to like i don't know change it drastically but I came out of it feeling quite confident in it, mm. which is a completely opposite thing that I thought would happen. Like mm. I was, I was so scared to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that feeling. I'm I'm my own worst critic as well. So, mm. it's good when especially you... when you've been working on something for so long. Yeah, like having that little bit of relief from that feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, take it from me. It's definitely it's definitely good stuff. So yeah, thank you. Um, so. Uh, after PAX, is there any other conventions or play testing or we, events? We went to Armageddon in yeah. New Zealand. <laughs> okay. Oh, I did. Um, yeah. Which was basically just, I didn't get to play test it. I had a little artist sort of spot and I was just kind of sort of showing people and sort of telling them what the game was about. Hmm. And I had a lot of, lot of interest there, which was great as well. Even though they didn't play it, they were very drawn to the art style. I guess yeah. we've... Which uh, does its job. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. We've approached this whole thing a lot different to our past kickstarters because our past kickstarters have been highly relied on conventions we'd have at least four events on during the month of the 
Kickstarter so we could just push that and just get it in people's faces. It worked really well. Mm -hmm. But with this, we kind of didn't have that opportunity. Our lives have changed so much with the two kids. My time has been oh, cut yeah. in a third. I don't know how you guys basically. And then our money's it's... gone into the like the samples and yeah. everything that we've had to make. So we haven't been like there's some conventions we could have done. We, didn't we have the just money didn't have the money to do it because mm -hmm. we've just invested so hard in making this game as best as it can possibly be. Yeah. And so that's a bit of a risk in a way, like to us anyways, mm. that we don't have that convention to give it to people's face. We have to rely purely online. Yeah. And we just hope scary. that the right people see it. Yeah. That's, and so, yeah. yeah. That's where so, it's scary. And obviously we told you, I think, that our launch date was supposed to be PAX. The start of PAX, that was when we were supposed to release the Kickstarter. Yeah. But we just did not do the advertising. We thought... I think Jesse had that mindset of like, no, give the urgency, like let people know a week before Kickstarter is going to be out in a week and yeah. people just have to buy it. But mm. we just thought we've been so inactive on our social media because we've been doing this, mm. that we just didn't have the propulsion that we needed. So we just, we made the, I think it was like a less than a week beforehand. Yeah, I think like, the week of, it's not going to happen. I had a talk with Haley. I'm like, look, we don't even have our samples yet. Yeah. We don't have like this sort of thing's not working. Maybe it's a sign that we just delayed a little bit longer. Mm. And it was heartbreaking because I think since the since its conception, we were like, PAX. Like yeah. maybe a few years after we started, we we're like, this will be perfect. This will be our end PAX. Like mm. we'll Because we'll so many people go it. to these events. Yeah. Mm. And, and so it was to relinquish that idea that we're going to release it was a big thing for us. And I think I was really not on board at the start, but I saw how much it was affecting Jesse. I'm like, oh, my God, stop being selfish, you know. <laughs> um, just do what he needs to do. And yeah. it worked out really well. It meant we could just just solely focus on advertising and showing it rather than yeah. stressing about what the Kickstarter is doing, stressing about having to work on the page and make sure it's uh, running oh, this correctly. Isn't ready. This isn't ready yet. Yeah. 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 Um, obviously there's not going to be, everything's not going to be completely ready. Like that's just, I've just got to accept that. But mm. basically what I'm doing is I'm showcasing what it is. Mm. And then I'm going to have a little bit of time as it's being manufactured to, to do those things. Yeah. Um, which is what Kickstarter is all about. It'll help me, I guess, get the funds to do those development sort of stages to get mm. it exactly right and yeah i guess doing that convention just yeah gave me the confidence to be like no we can do it online it's possible because mm -hmm. so many people were like no i'm definitely doing it i'm definitely jumping on and i've had constantly people asking me when's it coming out when's it coming out so i'm i'm that's i I'm, I'm feel like there's a good sign that it'll you know do well and i have i have a view of like our business moving forward we hope freight ally comes a big part of who we are i didn't like as an identity business wise, because it's so character based. So we want to release clothing. We want to release merchandise all mm -hmm. to do with these characters. And then we also still want to do our handmade clothing, but it just be a part of our income rather than our whole income, yeah. because mm -hmm. it's been a lot to obviously rely on me making everything. I've had a helper the last couple of years coming in and helping cutting and sewing. There he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's been really tough. Oh yeah. Okay. It's gonna be crying in the back. Sorry, one sec. Baby's weak. Right. <laughs> it is interesting though with uh, social media, how like there's just so much going on all the time. Like it's overwhelming, and yeah. it's so much work to always be on, like having an online. Be present. active is very difficult. And I found it interesting going to PAX and actually talking to people face to face. Um, I was just like, oh, this is a this is still the best way to sort of do Definitely. it. Definitely. I think that's for us. Whoops, sorry. One sec. For us, conventions has always been how we've advertised. Mm. So even though you're paying for your space, you're able to see so many people and just people that don't necessarily, they might not find or might not think they're interested. When you start to talk to them, yeah, they're like, wait, that is something I'm really keen for. And mm. then you can have that discussion where online you might not even have the chance. Well, because even when we're doing our clothing, we're only showing a tiny fraction of what we're doing because mm. we make so many different items. Yeah. So once you start that conversation, it comes out, oh, wow, yeah, that's something I'd be interested in, but you're not yeah. necessarily showing it at the time. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, hard, it's hard, like you get the TikTok by like the little video or whatever, and it's like, wow, that's cool, like and move on. But I think when you're – I think it's the same thing with the little character – models it's that tangibility of like actually yeah, having a connection hand, seeing it and having a connection yeah and i mean i'm someone who's like 
I don't want to talk to anyone, leave me alone. (laughs) But like going to the convention. You're in the wrong industry. (laughs) Yeah, no, exactly. And that's why like PAX was like the first time I was like going out and like interviewing people and talking to people face to face. I'm like, oh, this is still the best way to just make connections and and understand where people are coming from and what what they've got going on. So I think you can can kind of get out of touch with the whole like one second flick, one second flick. Whereas like and it has felt like that for us being away from events. We we do feel irrelevant a little bit. Yeah. There's definitely times where you work hard on doing like a post or something and it doesn't do well. Yeah. And you're like you feel very down because yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's very tough it's, being like a, a creator yeah. in that sort of world. Social media is so can be brutal. Icky. It's yeah, toxic. Brutal. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um but in saying that, I guess it's really necessary, especially when you're trying to promote something. And mm, um, definitely has its opportunities as well. Yeah. Um, so the Kickstarter were, starts on Tuesday, Tuesday. November yep. 14th. 14th. That's yep. And we're Which, starting at 8 a.m. Yeah. AEDT. Is that the time? Eight. Okay. Eight, yeah. Eight. It's a Look, we're really weird about the time. Like, I don't like, know what's we're, the we're, time. I've thought eight or maybe 10 because we have two kids. So mm. one of them goes to daycare. And I was thinking like potentially do it then. That way we've got our focus. Whereas if mm. it's at eight, we're out. We Maybe something's not right. I'll have to mm. fix it. That's- but I feel like 8 a.m. is a good time because it's like just before people might go for, go to work. So they might have chance to look at it before then. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. And then we wanted to make it an okay time for the US as well. Yeah. That's so it's, the, I think it's like 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., depending if you're in the East or the West okay. Coast. We thought yeah. like that's not in the middle of the night or anything. So, yeah. so we haven't got a, I guess, a locked in exact time, but between 8 and 10, I'd say. Okay. I haven't committed to it yet. Okay. <laughs> but it is, it is the 14th. Yes, yes, definitely the 14th, yeah. So this episode, when listeners hear it, should be on the 14th. So they should be able to see the Kickstarter. What time do you usually release it? Uh, We go live at 6 p.m. on Tuesday night. Awesome. Um, And then we release the podcast like Wednesday afternoon. So Mm. that'll be like the 15th. So by by that time, the Kickstarter will be live. It'll be funded by then. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> just have your just have your hopes right up there. I, I really hope it's one of those things where you see the banner where it says "funded in three hours." Yeah, that yeah, would be I amazing. Hope, hope so. That was our <laughs> glider cape got funded in forty eight hours. So, oh yeah, we so you, fingers crossed. But you can't have them too high. You don't want to be dashed too yeah, much. Yeah, but, so this is a completely different yes, thing for us. So very different. That's why I'm a bit nervous because you know we're used to making clothing or whatever, and this is sort of out of our realm normally. So hopefully. That our followers still want to support that. I think, yeah, I think they've, like you were saying earlier, you've got that community already built and like the character of Button Fox and he's like the mascot. And, hmm. and now you've got all the other characters. Like, I think it's just even people who don't play card games are like, oh, this is a cool world and expansion of the thing I already am interested in. Um, Definitely. I hope so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Kickstarter should be up when this episode is out. So make sure to go to the Frayed Ally Kickstarter, which will link. Yeah, there's the... also a pre-launch page, so you can get notified. Yes. Yeah, Not that way. matters because it'll I be mean, it, you, It's important if it's 8 or 10 o'clock, you know what I mean? No, it's going to be they're, <laughs> when, they're yeah, going live the Wednesday. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. does not matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, um, we'll uh, link the the... Uh, what did you call it? The pre, the pre-launch, pre-launch yeah. page earlier, and then we'll release the episode at the same time, like to coincide with the launch. Um, yeah, so definitely go to Kickstarter and definitely support Fred Ally and yeah, with your um, friends. Yeah, and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. Exactly. To, yes. Yeah. yeah, and <laughs> get your grandma to make an account and. <laughs> Look, yes. they'll have a great time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, I know you're super busy. Um, no, thank you for yeah, you know, thanks. scheduling so, us in as well. Yeah. No, that, um, I really appreciate your time. And um, one day when things are not so hectic, I will have to come down and like maybe do like a 
tour of your workshop and <laughs> yeah. something like that. And, you know, I might have to steal one of those jackets. Or, <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to Haley about getting me a custom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The green monkey zip. Oh, there you go. I think I'll see like a Tuesday review on the back or something. Oh, no, no one wants that. No. (laughs) Oh, savage. (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, thank you so much, guys. Do you want to plug your social media? Um, Just at Uh, BTN Fox is our main one. Yeah. So Um, that's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And then we even have a Twitch, which is Button Fox. we haven't been super active recently. We were doing it twice a it's week. It's hard when we have kids, but we're trying to get back into it hopefully eventually once, you know, the yeah. sleeping schedule's all lined up. Well, I think but... we were planning to go live the day of the launch, weren't we? Yeah, I yeah. think we will. So yeah. we'll be probably streaming our regular time, yep. so 9 o'clock at night. Well, basically, we'll be... BTN Fox, all our socials is our tag. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and make sure to go on the Kickstarter, support these guys with their awesome game and good luck for the launch and the future i can't wait to see more button fox and freighter ally yeah <laughs> yes yeah, hopefully you'll see the whole universe yes as that's in, 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 in my head hopefully comes out here yeah. eventually. <laughs> i want the franchise i want the shared universe franchise yeah, the, the disney of <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> but thank okay. you yeah thanks uh, so much james thank you so much we hope you enjoyed the interview um, for uh, Freight Ally with yeah. uh, Jesse and Haley yep. from Button Fox. Um, again, the Kickstarter is now live. Please go and yeah, give definitely it a go gander. there. Support we'll share them. that on our socials. Yeah, yeah. all the description, uh, all the links will be in the description. So their Kickstarter page, where you can follow them, and where you can follow us, and obviously our new YouTube page, which is now live. Um, so you can go there to see the full video interview of this re- interview. Um, and also we're hoping to have a few more of these uh, video interviews up in the next couple of months as well. So subscribe to YouTube, to our YouTube. And yeah, it's finally... Let us know yeah, what you and think. It's finally... We did it. <laughs> we <That's> finally it. <laughs> we said we we're going to do YouTube. We didn't put up all the PAX videos yet, but... We'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully in the next few weeks we'll get start getting um, start getting movement on that um, yep. again thanks everyone for listening please like share and subscribe on all the socials at Tuesday Review AU yep. uh, so that's Twitter Facebook Instagram Threads and Newsmast, Newsmast and YouTube and now YouTube yeah and ring the bell you can actually ring yeah, it ring this that time bell. Yeah. yeah it's not <laughs> not just a joke with it. it's like you can actually ring yeah <laughs> we'll be back next week thanks for listening everyone adios cousins <laughs>